Welcome to the studio. Today we're diving into the hidden costs of 3D printing and those sneaky expenses that catch you off guard and drain your wallet faster than your printer drains a spool of filament. If you think you've got this hobby all figured out, surprise, you've only seen the tip of the iceberg. One thing, I don't know why, it doesn't even matter how hard you try. Keep that in mind, I'm designed this product to explain in due time. All I know, time is a valuable thing. Watch it fly by as the pendulum swings. Watch it count down to the end of the day, the clock takes life away. So and before we dive in, Make sure to stick around until the end. I'm gonna share a tip on how you can save money and get free filament, accessories, and even 3D printers. You won't wanna miss it. Stick around, all the way to the end. All right, let's kick things off with the first hidden cost, maintenance and upkeep. Now, if you're new to 3D printing, it's easy to think that the initial price of the printer and a few spools of filament are your main expenses. But here's the reality. Your printer's components like the nozzle, PTFE tubes, and even build plates don't last forever. They wear out, and when they do, replacements aren't just an option, they're a necessity. Now let's talk about nozzles. If you're printing with abrasive filaments like carbon fiber or glow in the dark, you'll be swapping out nozzles more often than you think. And while a single nozzle might only cost you a few bucks, replacing them every few months adds up. And with so many composite filaments out there today, including carbon fiber, glass, and even Kevlar filled filaments, you may want to keep a few nozzles on hand. Nozzles range in price from just a few dollars uh, for cheap ones. Um, you can even get five and 10 and 20 packs off Amazon for a few dollars, um, all the way up to as much as $15 or higher uh, for really good quality nozzles. And then there's the PTFE tubes. A lot of machines today are running complex PTFE systems, and these tubes take a beating over time, especially with these same aggressive filaments that eat up our nozzles. PTFE degrades over time, it causes increased friction, inconsistent extrusion, and eventually you'll need to replace it to keep your prints looking nice and sharp. Most printer companies have PTFE kits available on their website, and prices range from just a few bucks to as much as $20 or more. I'll have links in the description for some good quality nozzles uh, for most 3D printers on the market, and uh, maybe I'll include some links for PTFE uh, kits as well. Next up on our list of hidden costs is something you might not think about until you get your first hefty utility bill, and that's electricity consumption. 3D printing is an energy intensive hobby, and while it's easy to focus on the excitement of your latest print, it's important to remember that your printer is essentially a small appliance running for hours on end, sometimes even days at a time. Let's break this down a bit. The heated bed, hot end, and motors are all drawing power constantly when your 3D printer is running. And if you're printing something large or using high temp filaments, your printer is going to be working extra even overtime, and that's going to reflect in your energy usage. Even if you're running a smaller or relatively energy efficient model, the cost adds up over time, especially if you're running multiple printers uh, or printing frequently, which we all do. The average printer when printing is drawing anywhere from 150 to 350 watts of power and of course a much larger machine or a machine with multiple nozzles or tool heads can quickly get to as much as a thousand watts of power or more. And uh, imagine running your microwave for hours on end or days at a time, it adds up. And another point, if you're using a resin printer, the UV light still requires quite a bit of energy and so does the wash and cure stations. So even resin printing um, takes up quite a bit of power. Let's talk about the learning curve. One of the sneakiest hidden costs in 3D printing is filament waste. When you're starting out, it's easy to get caught up in the excitement of printing, but the reality is not every print is going to be a success. In fact, early on, a lot of prints will fail, and whether it's due to poor bed adhesion, incorrect settings, or just plain experimentation, it doesn't matter, you will have failures. Every failed print is more than just a disappointment, it's wasted filament, and that filament waste adds up. Whether it's that big helmet uh, you were trying to print overnight, or that small test piece that you were trying to use to dial in your settings, every misstep costs material, and that material isn't cheap. So while the learning curve is an exciting journey, be prepared for the cost of these early mistakes. It's all a part of mastering the craft, even though your wallet might feel a little sting along the way. Software is another hidden cost that I think might surprise you. While there are plenty of free tools out there, if you're serious about 3D printing, you will eventually run across and need to invest in premium software, and that's where the costs start to really add up. Take Fusion 360, for instance. It's one of the most powerful CAD tools out there, perfect for designing intricate models and functional parts. While there's a free version, it's limited, if you want access to the full suite of tools like advanced simulations or generative design or unrestricted file exports, you're going to be looking at an annual subscription and that can exceed hundreds of dollars. 
And if you're into resin printing, you may prefer to use a dedicated and feature-rich slicer like Cheetahbox. The basic version is free, but for more advanced features like custom support generation and generally more control over your prints, you'll need to upgrade to Cheetahbox Pro, and that's gonna set your wall back a little bit. All right, now let's move on to another hidden cost, post-processing. This is where um, the tools can get a little bit expensive. First up, sandpaper. If you're working with FDM prints, especially larger ones, you're gonna need a variety of grits to smooth out layer lines and imperfections. You might start with something coarse like 120 grit and work your way up to a fine 400 or 600, or even 1,000 grit for, uh, for a smooth finish. Uh, but trust me, you're gonna go through a lot more sandpaper than you expect and the price can add up. Now I hate sanding, but it is a necessary evil in 3D printing. Then. There's a deburring tool. It's a tool that I use all the time, and it's a must-have for cleaning up edges, especially if you're printing helmets or parts with brims. This tool quickly smooths out those rough edges and sharp spots, saving you tons of time, um, but it is another added expense uh, to your toolkit. Uh, deburring tools run anywhere from about three to five to 20 or $30, depending on whether you want plastic or metal, you know, how expensive you wanna go. Let's talk about visor material for helmets. That adds up really quick, and I'll have links in the description for the visor material that I use, but ultimately, think 15 to $20 per visor per helmet. And uh, like I said, that's a cost that gets out of hand, especially if you start to produce, you know, four, five, 10, 20, 30 helmets. You're talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars just for that visor material. And of course, let's not forget about paint and primer. Uh, this can add up super fast, especially if you're looking for that really high quality finished look. Paint and primer are expensive. And also, let's not forget about adhesives like super glue or even 3D glue. Uh, they're key for like really strong lasting bonds with prints. All of this is a cost. So while post-processing is kind of where the magic happens, it is also one of the heaviest hits on your wallet. It gets expensive really quick. Let's talk about upgrades and modifications. One of the most exciting and costly aspects of 3D printing, especially for those of you that like to tinker. Once you've got your printer up and running, it's super tempting to start thinking about how you can make it better, faster, and even more versatile, but those upgrades come at a price. First up, the hot end. Upgrading to an all metal or performance hot end allows you to print with higher temperature filaments like nylons or polycarbonates, but it's gonna set you back anywhere from 50 to $100 or more. Then there's the extruder. Stronger extruders are simply swapping out a Bowden setup for a direct drive, uh, can give you better control of your flexible filaments, but that's another $100 or more. So see that? Really quick, a couple hundred bucks right there. Next, consider your print bed. If you're running a little bit of an older machine, you might want to upgrade to a PEI sheet or a magnetic flex plate for better adhesion and easier print removal. Again, more costs. But it doesn't stop there. You might find yourself investing in better cooling fans, upgraded stepper motors, or even a new enclosure for better print quality and safety. Each of these enhancements improves your prints, but it's also going to add up very quickly. You can take a printer that initially cost a couple hundred dollars, and you can put several more hundred dollars in upgrades. It adds up. But it will be pretty cool though. Next on the list of hidden costs are tools you'll need to keep your 3D printer game running strong. And while many printers come with a basic toolkit, you'll quickly find out that those stock tools just don't cut it for serious work. First up, a good set of hex drivers. Those little Allen wrenches that come with your printer, they're okay in a pinch, I guess, but upgrading to a quality set of hex drivers will make assembly, maintenance, and even adjustments on your printer so much easier. And a good set of those on Amazon um, will be anywhere from 20 to $30, and I'll try and have links in the description for that. You'll also need a set of digital calipers for precise measurements, especially when designing your own parts or ensuring dimensional accuracy with your 3D printer. A reliable set will set you back anywhere from around 20 uh, to 50 or more dollars. And don't forget the specialty tools like nozzle cleaning kits, which are essential for clearing out clogs and keeping your printer running smoothly. These kits can range anywhere from like three or $4 up to about $30. Let's talk about storage solutions. And this is a hidden cost that often gets overlooked by a lot until it's too late. If you're serious about 3D printing, you've likely got a growing collection of filament spools, kind of like I do here. And, uh, but here's the thing. Filament is hygroscopic, meaning it absorbs moisture from the air, and that can lead to poor print quality, brittle prints, and even clogs. To keep your filament in tip-top condition, you're going to need proper storage. Now, airtight containers are a must to protect your investment, and those aren't free. Um, you can pick up decent-sized containers at any big box store for anywhere from $10 to $20, but that's not going to hold a lot of spools, and you need multiple of those. 
you might have noticed that my filament is out in the open on these shelves, and that's because I'm lucky enough to live on a mountain with very low humidity. The dry air up here helps prevent moisture from getting into the filament, so I can safely store it out in the open uh, without worrying too much. But for most people, that's not the case. For those dealing with higher humidity, a filament dryer is another great solution that you must have. These devices not only store your filament, but they also actively dry it, ensuring it's ready to use whenever you need it. A good filament dryer can cost anywhere from $50 uh, to $100 or so right around there. And while it's a solid investment, it's another expense that you may not have anticipated. You might also consider adding desiccant packs to each of the containers that you have, and that's going to help absorb any residual moisture that keeps getting into your filament um, inside those containers. These little packs are super inexpensive, uh, but it's another cost uh, to factor in. Now, let's talk about ventilation and safety equipment. Nobody really talks about this, but I think that this is a crucial hidden cost of 3D printing. When you're printing materials like ABS and ASA, nylon, um, or resin, you're not just creating awesome prints, you're also producing fumes and particles that can be harmful if not managed properly. That's why investing in a good ventilation system is essential. For many, this means printing in a well-ventilated space, but another great solution is using an enclosure. Enclosures not only help manage the fumes by containing them, but they also improve print quality by maintaining a stable temperature. And depending on the size and material, a good enclosure can cost anywhere from $50 or maybe even like $30, but $50 to about $300 or more. Um, but also, if you can't have that, keep a window open. Keep some fresh air coming in and going. Now, resin printing brings with it its own set of challenges. The fumes from resin are not only smelly, but for some they can be toxic. And an enclosed workspace with proper ventilation is a must. And uh, you'll also want to consider getting a respirator, especially if you're handling resin a lot. And a good quality respirator can cost anywhere from $30 to $60 to $90 or so. And you'll also need to replace those filters regularly. More cost. And let's not forget about fire safety. This is a big deal for me. 3D printers are electrical devices that run for hours at a time. And while rare, fire hazards are something to consider. Having a fire alarm in your printing area and a fire extinguisher nearby is a must. And uh, I would say a basic fire extinguisher that can cost anywhere from around $20 to about $50, but it's priceless for the peace of mind that it provides and the safety it really is. You should have one. So to wrap up safety, while 3D printing is an exciting hobby, make sure you're safe while doing it. Um, I think the cost is well worth it. Don't ignore it. Let's end here with the last hidden cost that often surprises people, shipping and import fees for specialty materials. Now, while it's easy to get caught up in the excitement of trying out new filaments um, or even specialty resins, the cost of getting those materials to your doorstep can add up super fast, especially if you're ordering from international suppliers. Now, I know not everyone watching this is based in the U.S. where we often get free or discounted shipping from domestic suppliers. But if you're outside the U.S. or even if you're ordering from a smaller international company, shipping fees can be a real budget buster. Take Prushment, for example. We used to order a ton of it directly from the Czech Republic. And while the quality is fantastic, the shipping costs were a different story. The price of getting a few spools shipped across the ocean could almost double the cost of our filament. And that's before you factor in any import duties or taxes that might get tacked on once the package arrives in the U.S. And it's not just filament either. Specialty resins, high-end nozzles, or even rare spare parts can come with hefty shipping fees if you're ordering from faraway places. And let's be honest, when you're deep into this hobby, waiting weeks for a package and then paying a premium for it can be frustrating. So while it's exciting to experiment with new materials, just remember to factor in those extra costs. They can turn a good deal into an expensive surprise. Now, I promised you there was a way to score some free stuff. And if this sounds good, you need to join us over on my Twitch live streams, where I give away stuff from our amazing sponsors every time I go live, from filament and accessories to even printers. You should join us. I'm live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 5 p.m. Pacific over on twitch.tv slash loyalmoses. I'll have links on the screen and in the description. You need to come over. We'd love to have you. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, subscribe. We've got a lot more great content coming your way, so ring that bell also um, so you don't miss out when that content posts. And a huge thank you to our YouTube members and our Patreon members. Your support makes this channel possible, and I couldn't do it without you. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you on the next one. Go. Find a way to save some money. Do it. <laughs>